This is an alligator sitting on the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico right now over one mile deep. It's being eaten by giant deep sea isopods. Studying this alligator is helping us learn more about the invertebrates of ancient oceans and how carbon from land makes it into the deep ocean. The alligators in this study were donated to science by the state of Louisiana. They were humanely euthanized as part of an intense management program that has helped the American alligator bounce back from nearly going extinct. Most of the earth is covered by oceans so deep that no sunlight reaches them. These places are dark and cold but full of life. The deep ocean is a food desert sprinkled with food oases. Some of these oases are vents in the ocean floor where chemicals come out, or food falling from the ocean's surface. Most food fall research so far has focused on marine mammals like whales and sea lions, large fish like tuna, sometimes sharks and rays, and even wood. Putting an alligator on the seafloor, just like the wood fall work we've done, helps us see what happens when rivers transport food to the deep ocean. Alligator falls may be common, Alligator carcasses are regularly found on beaches and coastlines, and after big storms or hurricanes, alligators have been seen alive 18 miles offshore. Alligator falls are also a way for us to peek into the past. Alligators are one of the closest ways we can study the food falls of long extinct large marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs. Indeed, alligators and crocodile food falls may be the last remaining refuge of specialized invertebrates that were also in ancient oceans. This alligator is tens of miles off the coast of Louisiana and a mile and a quarter down on the seafloor. After 24 hours at the bottom, it looked like this. These animals are giant deep sea isopods. They're related to the roly polies or pill bugs we have on land, but they're about as big as a football. They're scavengers who eat dead animals. This footage was taken less than 24 hours after the alligator was placed on the seafloor. I was surprised that there was already giant isopods all over it. I thought it would take a while for them to get the chemical cues that would allow them to sort of locate a food fall like an alligator. I was also impressed at the work that they were able to do. I thought that the alligator hide would be something hard for them to get through but obviously their, their pinching and crushing mandibles made uh, easy work of the hide. You can see where the hide has actually been ripped away and the ribs are exposed. There's actually two inside there, they're hard to see, but two of them have just started going at the alligator from the interior of the body cavity. And so it's actually interesting and quite funny to see that giant isopod do a nosedive into the bottom because we've seen that in other scavengers where they'll eat so much that they basically become uh, immobile or stupefied in their actions. And so that may just be the fact that they've gorged themselves so much in an effort to get this rare resource that they've actually, you know, uh, inhibited themselves from, from proper locomotion. And this is the whole strategy of a giant isopod. We think that one of the reasons why they're so giant compared to the roly polies or pill bugs that we know of is that a lot of the interior of a giant isopod is just lipid and fat. So they have this amazing ability to gorge themselves, store that energy, and then basically not have another meal for months to years afterwards. Giant isopods that have been kept in Aquarium, including the Okinawa Aquarium, have not fed for over two years. When we return two months after this video is made, I suspect we'll see about half the animal, uh, the alligator carcass, removed. I think it'll be interesting to see what new scavengers show up mm. within the two months that we've been there, if, if any. I mean. I just think maybe there might be some brittle stars or, or some other... Brittle other... stars in the sediments around, rat tails. We'll probably see some more scavenging fish, maybe amphipods. Yeah, as the flesh gets harder to get by the large guys, then that will probably open up a room for smaller animals to get in there and just kind of uh, go at it bit by bit. 
And we're hoping when we return one of those ribs or another bone will be easily collected by, can be easily collected by the remote operated vehicle so that we can see if there's hints of bone-eating worms or osidex um, on this. Osidex have never been described from the Gulf of Mexico and obviously never from an alligator fall since this is the first one. And so we may be discovering a new species of bone-eating worm from these experiments.